we will have a look at the types of firewalls mainly packet filtering firewall there are different types of firewalls such as packet filtering firewalls circuit level for gateway firewalls stateful inspection firewalls application level gateways and next generation firewalls so what is a packet filtering firewall this firewall creates a checkpoint at the traffic router or switch and performs a simple check of the data packets for example ip address or tcp port number which are coming through the router and the second ip circuit level gateways which actually verifies the tcp handshake for legitimate session and third one is stateful inspection firewalls which combines both the technologies which are there in packet filtering and circuit level that is packet inspection technology and tcp handshake verification to create a greater level of protection in the application level gateways also it is known as proxy firewalls they operate at the application layer to filter the incoming traffic between the network and the traffic source then you have next generation fire firewalls which are more sophisticated that include deep packet inspection that is actually checking the actual contents of the data packets then it also involves tcp handshake checks and surface level packet inspection and so on so all these kinds of firewalls require certain functionalities to be delivered so these functionalities are delivered using either software based implementation hardware based implementation or cloud based implementation now let's elaborate on packet filtering firewalls so if you look at the diagram here this is the outside world connected to the internet and this is the your premises network or private network that is connected to the internet and any traffic from coming from the internet to this private network has to pass through this packet filtering router so this entire private network we call it as a security perimeter so which is being secured through this packet filtering router so here this applies a set of rules this particular packet filtering router applies a set of rules to each incoming ip packet and then forwards or discards the packet this normally operates at transport layer and network layer and it filters packets going in both the direction that is from the internet to the private network or from private network to the internet that is this is the inbound traffic and this is the outbound traffic packet filter is typically consisting of a set of rules or a list of rules based on the matches to the fields either in ip header or tcp header there are normally two default policies used in this packet filtering router that is either discard a packet or you know forward a packet that is based on the matching of specified rules so what are the rules that are used in a packet filter source ip address destination ip address source and destination transport level address ip protocol field and interface so these are the five kinds of rules which may be employed in building the packets either inbound or outbound the source ip address the ip address of the system that originated the ip packet will be examined by the packet filtering firewall in the second case there is destination ip address the firewall examines the ip address of the system that is trying to reach in a system in the network that is coming from uh, outside world then the third one is source and destination transport level address that is basically tcp or udp address with the port numbers which defines applications such as snmp that is simple network management protocol or telnet which is remote logging so port numbers are examined to check whether they can be discarded or forwarded then ip protocol field is checked to define uh to find out what kind of transport protocol is used tcp or udp then your interface is one of the rule where for a firewall with three or more ports which interface of the firewall the packet is coming from or which interface of the firewall the packet is destined to so those things are examined by the firewall from which port it is going out or from which port 
it is coming in let's look at some examples of the rules there are three rules defined rule a rule b and rule c let's look at the rule a in the rule a you have the six columns here action our host and port number that is uh, you know our uh, network and our uh, machine this is outside network and outside machine and their port number and this comment what it is doing if you look at this its block is the action star means it's a wild card which matches everything so that means our any machine in our network star means any machine in our network port star means any port in our network so any machine with any port number in our network can uh, uh, block a host from outside the network called as picot with any port number that means we are not trusting these particular machines which are outside the network that is picot machine is not being trusted so they are blocked so packets from a particular external host picot are blocked and the second uh, action is allow that is inbound mail is allowed that is port 25 which is for smtp protocol is being allowed so we can observe here so in our network our gateway with port number 25 is being allowed from any of the other machines that means in the other machines outside the network can connect to our smtp port and the second rule says that action is block and all star means any machine inside any port of the machine inside any machine outside any port of the machine outside the policy to be applied is default policy so default policy is discard that is block policy is being employed here so this is an explicit statement of the default default policy all rules sets include this rule implicitly as the last rule and the third rule is where in it tells any inside host can send mail to the outside machine so you can see your action is allowed any inside machine with any port number any outside machine with port number 25 which is 25 is for smtp so any machines inside the network can communicate to any machine outside the network on port number 25 that is they can connect to their smtp ports so these are several examples of the roles rules that can be employed to filter the packets so what are the advantages and disadvantages of this packet filtering firewalls advantages are its simplicity transparency to the users and its high speed but they do have some disadvantages or limitations for example they do not examine the upper layer data they only examine data at transport layer and network layer and they cannot prevent attacks which are at the application specific functions that is application specific vulnerabilities cannot be looked into and the second problem is the logging functionality present in the packet filter firewall is limited they do not have more uh, fields in the logging functions do not support advanced user authentication schemes and these are vulnerable to attacks and exploits which take advantage of the problems within the tcp ip specification and protocol stack for example it could be network layer address spoofing and lastly due to the small number of variables that are used in the access control decisions these firewalls are susceptible to security breaches caused by improper configurations there are certain attacks and also countermeasures on this packet filtering firewalls so attacks could be ip address spoofing or source routing attacks or tiny fragment attacks in ip address spoofing the intruder transmits packet from the outside with the source ip address field containing an address of an internal host that means it's kind of uh, forging that is the external person uses the internal ip address to transmit the packets and assume that you know firewall 
uh, after looking that IP address is internal, so it will just allow them in. The countermeasure to overcome this kind of IP address spoofing is to discard all the packets with an inside source address if it is coming from external interface. If it is coming from internal or, uh, interface, no problem. It is actually the internal machine is sending some information with the source IP address. If it is coming from external interface, that means somebody is spoofing the IP address of the internal machines. So discard such packets. Then you have source routing, uh, routing attacks, where in, in case of routing, uh, for better quality of services, source routing, uh, routing is employed, that is, you know, path is established from source to destination by the source itself and the packet moves in that particular path. So this particular kind of mechanism is, uh, uh, you know, exploited by uh, intruder and he tries to specify the route and it crosses the internet and in the hope that this will bypass security measures that do not analyze the source routing information. So with the assumption that source routing packets are not analyzed by the firewall, he transmits it. But the countermeasure that can be used here is to overcome source routing attack is to discard all the packets which use source routing options. Third one is tiny fragment attacks. Here attack is based on IP fragmentation option in the IP header. The intruder uses the IP fragmentation option to create extremely small fragments. It creates small fragments and forces the TCP header information into a separate packet fragment. So the attacker now hopes that the filtering firewall examines only the first fragment and that the remaining fragments are just simply passed through. So to overcome this kind of problem wherein the internet is trying to only um, fragment the packet and uh, force the TCP header information into separate packet fragment where it cannot be examined. But the countermeasure for this is a tiny fragment attack can be defeated by enforcing a rule that the first fragment of a packet must contain a predefined minimum amount of the transport header. If the first fragment is rejected, then filter can remember that packet and discard all subsequent fragments. So this is how the tiny fragment attack can be overcome. So it's only if the first fragment is rejected, rest all packets will be rejected. But there is a condition that even the first fragment should have some TCP information. So after having looked at the packet filtering firewalls, you have to check your learning outcomes by answering the following. What are different types of firewalls? What are the rules used in packet filtering firewall? Use some examples of rules in packet filtering firewall. What are the advantages and disadvantages of packet filtering firewalls? List the attacks and countermeasures in packet filtering firewalls.